Hi then, Square Cylinder. It's really nice to see you back in the uh, workshop again. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and, and what made you choose Hull uh, as, as your chosen venue for, for doing your yeah. uh, MNG, please? Hi, my name's Irfan. I'm originally from Blackburn, but I'm Indian in ethnicity. I chose Hull University because, um, because it, it provided a good course for mechanical engineering and it was also very friendly when I came to see it. Uh, hi, my name is Maria Masrus Said. Um, uh, I'm originally from Afghanistan, but I came from Newcastle to University. When I went to the medical uh, lab and I saw the um, modules regard to that uh, experiments and the um, uh, um, uh, projects they have for the medical students, makes me to think of uh, and instead of going for the civil engineer and do medical engineering, it was all opening day actually for me. <laughs> Excellent. Now, Judith, you're a local girl, aren't you? Yeah. Um, so do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, hi, I'm Judith. I've lived in Hull for 10 years now, and uh, but I'm originally from Zimbabwe. I chose to do medical and mechanical engineering at Uni of Hull because I think, as far as my research could tell, it was the only uni that did the medical engineering degree that was mixed with the mechanical because you kind of need that for employment purposes. So, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> and last but not least, Sarah, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Hey, I'm Sarah. I'm from Saudi Arabia. Um, the reason I picked Hull, uh, as Judith said, it's the only university that did uh, medical and mechanical engineering. And since I was young, I was into the medicine, but I loved physics. So that's why it just combined the things I love. Would you like to talk us through the design and make project brief that you were given at the outset? Yeah. The design brief was to produce an automated syringe filler that can operate three syringes simultaneously and it's meant to be able to pick up fluid from a position A and move it 90 degrees, 180 degrees and 270 degrees and then dispense the fluid into a container at these locations. Okay, so we have uh, three motors, one inside this trunk and one here and one here. This is responsible for moving, turning this screw, lifting this platform, and the one in here is responsible for moving down the arm. This is responsible, as you were saying, for it turning, and is using a pulley mechanism, which is operating a rubber band turning the entire trunk. So you've got a lead screw inside the yes, cylinder. Yes, the yeah. lead screw, the inside actually makes it move inside. And the, this lead screw is operating syringes to fill it up. As we can see, the syringes are filling. And the fluid represents probably, mm -hmm. what, blood samples? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 And again, with the same lead screw, we're pushing down the uh, syringes to this, this the last sample of the, the liquid. Yeah. Excellent. Am I also correct in thinking that before you enrolled on your respective uh, degree programs, none of you had either designed or made anything previously? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. So it's been quite a steep learning curve for yeah. you. Engineering is all about problem solving and invariably certain components for various reasons tend to take longer to manufacture than you first thought they would do. Which parts of your syringe rig caused you the most headaches and how did you overcome those problems? Judith, please. Uh, well, we were quite adamant on sticking to our design, the design we designed on our solid <coughs> works. So uh, we opted to use a CNC 3D machining to uh, make this platform that will lift the syringe head and fill the syringes. Uh, but uh, for example, the arm, uh, I, I made that uh, using milling machine. And it, just because of the, our design, it required a lot of shifting the part in awkward places to try and get those geometrical shapes. Um, it looks quite simple. It just looks sort of like a tube with something sticking out. But inside, you've got two parts in there that were made using lathe machine and milling machine. And that also required because we had quite a lot of complicated sh shapes to achieve a relatively simple looking design. You've all worked very well as a team to produce your syringe dispensing project. As potential design engineers of the future in your chosen field, can you tell us what you feel you've learnt from the module and what you feel has been most beneficial, Sarah? 
First of all, we learned how to work as a team and we used everyone's strengths uh, like for example Erfan worked in the lathe machine because he know how to operate it um, Mariam worked basically in everything <laughs> um, as for Judith she worked in the milling machine so like ev we divided everyone's work and everyone's strengths um, and we learned how to manage our time uh, that's why we finished this one in in time, um, uh, and yeah, we learned these two major things. So you think that teamwork obviously was 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 very beneficial, mm -hmm. yeah. and also playing to each other's strengths. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's brilliant. So, final question: Have you all enjoyed the time you've spent down here in the workshop? Yeah. 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 Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. <laughs> but seriously, uh, was as compared to the rest of the year, it's like a breath of fresh air. Yeah. Definitely. Excellent. Yeah. Jolly good.